What is going on, my frosty friends? My name is Wintercast Ice, and welcome back to Lake of Voices. All right, guys, I am so excited to get back into this game. If you guys remember, this game was made by GB Patch Games. Really awesome people, really awesome people. The person I got to talk to was really, really cool. Uh, I didn't really get to talk to him much, I just sent them a Twitter message and I was really excited to get a message back. But anyways, <laughs> I want to get right back into the Lake of Voices. I'm very interested to see where this game goes. So we're going to go back to this one right here. It's been a week since I played. So, <clears throat> as soon as I stepped onto the wood, the temperature dropped. The light of my lamp shines against the water's surface as reflective as a mirror. Until we reach land again, death is only one small mistake away. If you guys remember, we were currently we we're playing uh, we we're playing as a character, a group of characters who are trying to get across the river, uh, not across the river, across the lake, to the other side, so we can get to a village that we're trying to save. But we were warned that at least one of us was not going to survive. Okay, we fall into line with the guide uh, with the guide leading the way. Margaret stays close to him, and I behind her, watching to make sure she doesn't slip on the sleek wet wood. Bemele springs up the rear. I believe it's either Bemel or Bemele. Not sure. I keep I keep getting his pronouncing his name wrong. Each of us hold our lanterns in front of us, but it does not it does a little good. The fog is thick and and nigh impenetrable, consuming the light as if hungry for it. Above the surface of the lake is deathly quiet. No longer is there the whispering wind nor the sound of water lapping against the shore. It's just our own mismatched footsteps and the sound of our quickened breathing. Oh, God, this game is so... Oh, gosh. Oh, the artwork for this game is just so good, honestly. I, I cannot complain about any of this. My eyes drift back to the lake against my better judgment. It's no wonder why... Uh, no wonder there's not even the sound of water. With, uh, with how still the surface is, it seems almost sturdy with the sheen of black marble floor. Yikes. I've heard rumors the water of Sinalos... I, again, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is heavier, more difficult to disturb than natural water. That's just the weight of its oppressive cling to enough, is enough to keep someone down, even without them. That's dark. So even like whatever is down underneath the water can, you mean the water itself can drown you? Wow, dude. Something even darker than the abyss of the lake flickers just below the surface, or at least I think it does. I turn my gaze to Margaret's back. I better stay focused. It's better to stay focused. I really wish I could read. Following me too closely. The guy is looking over his shoulder, addressing Margaret. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't know me. Sorry. You're all good. If someone gets pulled into the lake, they'll instinctively reach for anything to hold on to. Do not let that be you. Margaret's shoulders rise, and she nods with great seriousness. Yeah, because if the guy dies, we all die. He's the only one who knows how to get from one place to another. He ignores her gratitude. You can speak amongst yourselves if you so choose, as long as you pay attention to where you're going. There is no worth in listening to the sounds out there. I mean, that's true. That's a fair statement right there. This would be a hard place to have a conversation, though, because of the fact that, like, all the doom and gloom. If there's anything at all, it'll only be Nixie trying to set you on edge. Sounds about right. If I remember, Nixie is the name of the creatures that live in the lake. If I remember correctly, anyways. Don't quote me on that. I freaking love the piano music for this. But yeah, no, that is... The, I, I think I could talk in this kind of situation just because, as you guys could probably tell, when I get scared or nervous, I tend to talk more. All right. Kikia. Then, could you tell us your name? You didn't have a chance to properly introduce yourself, and I've only heard you being referred to as the guy. Which is pretty accurate. I don't have a name. So <laughs> your name is the guide. <laughs> the name is the space guide. He's, uh, he's facing the front again, his voice as expressionless as before. I have no way of guessing how he feels as he says this. Oh. Ouch. That sounds painful, though. <laughs> to Mr. Guide. <laughs> it's probably not something he wishes to talk about. However, there was something else I wanted to say, so changing the subject is not difficult. Margaret, thank you for allowing us to join you. Margaret shrugs non-committedly. Okay. She hesitates, and then she looks tentatively over her shoulder at me. But thank you for saying that. It's appreciated. Good manners before one of us dies. Bemele and I will do our best. Bemele. Okay, I was pronouncing him right. Rather than a burden. That's nice. I'm not afraid 
to be out here alone. Still, at least with your training, you should be able to take care of yourselves. Very true. I admire her resilience. I do too. Like, to be in her shoes and to come out here, she's not a trained warrior or anything, so it's a good chance if the Nixie grab her, she's going to die. It's it's comforting to know that everyone here is so confident in their abilities. Not enough to not not enough to forget how terrible it feels to be over this lake. Yeah, I would feel a little nervous to be on this lake too. I am not sure. I am not sure if that is fortunate or unfortunate. Fortunate or unfortunate. Still can't read. Believing yourself to be secure doesn't mean that you are. As this as the conversation lulls, a new sound breaks through. It's the whispering noise again. It's the chatter of inhuman voices, and this time comes from all around us. Taking care of yourself is exactly what you need to do. Sounds about right. The guide is speaking again, except louder, as if to, as if to cover the next these voices with his own. Work to survive at all costs, and hope that everyone around you has enough sense to do the same. That's the only way you'll make it to the other side. Very true. Margaret nods in response, but I hear a grunt from behind me. Groups tend to go further when they work together to achieve the same goal. The guy doesn't say anything in response to Bemelay's grumbling either. I'm not sure whether he didn't hear Bemelay or whether he just didn't feel the statements made thus far are worthy of addressing. I can understand that. Bemelay seems to be a kind of a... Not like a mean guy, but just kind of arrogant. You know, he gets annoyed easily. I have a feeling it's the latter. More than likely. We go around a large bend in the bridge. Part of it... A uh, part of it forking off to another way. Why is this friggin bridge so large i wonder how the guide knows which one of these essentially essentially identical paths is correct when something in the corner of his ah uh, corner of my eye catches my attention i believe i saw something over there is this how they cross the lake i i was pretty confident there was going to be a boat keep walking no need to worry okay the guide's voice is very calm and level i decide against better I, I decide against pressing the issue not wanting to set everyone even more on edge what did he say didn't you hear him? Perhaps not wanting the conversation to be caught by the guide. He speaks softly, though. I couldn't quite hear him because of it. Uh, I take my eyes off Margaret ahead for a moment to explain it to Bemele and stop dead in my tracks. Only one word is able to escape me in my stunned state. Behind Bemele stands a fi another figure looming in the darkness. Seeing my face, Bemele grabs the hilt of his sword. He whips around and staggers swiftly backwards. What the fuck is that thing? Several meters away, a crooked, twisted black figure hobbles its way toward us. Some kind of liquid drop drips off its head, curling around the edge of his face. The words, it almost looks like it's crying. Bemelay backs up until he's standing beside me. The figure continues to slow advance, head jerking from one angle to another. Yeah, you're telling me. I don't know what the fuck that is. Yes, Nixie that stumbled across the bridges looking for opportunities. Good lord. The guide is standing next to us. I didn't even notice him approach. The ones that can make it out of the water are generally referred to as prowlers. Okay. I had no idea things like that were out here. Is that what Kika saw down here? Kika. The guide says nothing, instead returning to the front of the party. Margaret watches him pass. Her frustration morphs into nervous optimism when something seems to come into her mind. <laughs> you wish. Margaret's hand grips her face tight, and desperation bleeds into her voice. I bite the, the inside of my lip. That sounds about right. Instinctively, I reach for the hilt of my sword, despite the fact that it would do little to protect me. The prowler is getting closer, jerking forward, stomping, stopping, then resuming its slow advance. Okay. Uh, Only matches. So basically, we'd actually have to drop a lantern. Ben Malay spits. He's the one bringing up the rear, so he's the most likely to be in danger if it keeps following. The guide, however, moves forward. Don't forget it's there. Don't let your guard down, and don't get left behind. That sounds about right. What? How am I supposed to keep walking with this thing at my heels? You said it wants to attack. Yes, it wants to attack, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will attack. I'd assume it's kind of like the rake. It kind of probably studies you and then tries to strike. 
rather than just go directly for a strike because you know with the four of you you could probably counter it and knock it back into the water don't give it the chance sounds about right Bemele sputters in anger and the guy seemingly some similarly summarily oh my god i can't pronounce that properly ignores him i solidly grab hold of Bemele's upper arm Sounds good. Bemele eyes the guy the guy with unresolved hostility, but allows himself to softly sigh in relief. He gazes at me with fondness. At least there's someone I can count on. Don't say that yet. Despite the fact that I'm going against his advice, the guide says nothing more. It's clear now that he doesn't give a damn what we uh, what we end up doing. Some part of me is glad for that. Well, I mean, he's the guide. He has to live no matter what. We can die. That's that's like up to him. To, that, that, that's not his job. His job is to guide people across and keep himself alive because he's the only one who knows the way across. He doesn't, like, he shouldn't care about, like, if whether one person dies or not. Should, that's just the way it is. Like, it seems dark and it seems mean, but it's like, you know, what's that's his job. I want to help everyone make it through, and it would be worse to have to persuade the guide every time help was necessary. Exactly. Kika, thank you. No problem, Emily. Bemele places a gentle hand on my shoulder. Place my hand over his. I feel Bemele start as I reciprocate his touch, but just as quickly as the smile replaces his shock. The moment is pleasant. A small balm against a large burn. I harden my expression and Bemele follows suit. He moves his, hand, his free arm down. I fully link his arm with mine and now properly settle to look forward. Well, I mean, I kind of figured there's a good chance one of us is going to die. At least he has the no, he knows I care about him. Margaret is following the guide with some reluctance, turning back every so every so often to check on us. I wave my lantern to signal we're catching up. Margaret returns her head to the front and quickens her pace. With a tug on Bemele, we start to follow them. The four of us continue cautiously over the bridges, only this time the wet, squishing footsteps of the prowler join the sound of ours. Great. In spite of myself, I grip Emily tighter. The prowler walks without a set pattern, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. It takes long steps, then short ones. At times, it stops walking entirely. Does it hurt to be out of the water like this, or is it trying to be difficult to read? Honestly, it wouldn't be surprising if it was trying to be difficult to read. You know, with obviously with any animal or any monster, typically they do have a pattern, but sometimes if the monster is intelligent enough, it will try to discern its pattern so that people can't study them. Suddenly, the whispering in the lake grows louder. I steal myself, trying, to let it, trying not to let it get to me. The most important thing in a situation like this is to remain calm. I can't lose my head. Then, all at once, I notice the guide and Margaret have come to a halt. Emily slows down as I do, and as we near Margaret's back, she says with something akin to distress. Oh great! I took on Bemele, and he understands. We draw close on Margaret, ready to protect her if we need to, if need be. But the guide holds out a hand. Don't get any closer. Okay. Just over his shoulder, I see another prowler stumbling toward us. White liquid dripping from its eyes. Man, what the hell are those things? The guide's hand turns over in the air, palm up. Margaret extends with her own trembling hand when Bemele speaks instead, his back uh, his back still turned. You have to take someone, take mine. Yes. An extra light won't do as much good when we're standing this close together. Margaret takes Bemele's lantern from him and gu guarded relief displayed on her features. Thank you. She hands the lantern to the guide, whose hand grips it tightly, knuckles growing pale. Stay here. Fair enough. Okay, he steps closer to the monster. His movements, light and confident, as he nears the prow prowler, starts to back away. Is it only the approaching light that's making it retreat, or is or are they afraid of him? I mean, it could be both, but more than likely it's the light. The guide is far enough away from us, the fog is partially obscuring him, hiding his movements. The voices from the lake grow louder and louder. Water suddenly begins to splash across the lake in the distance and onto the ledges of the bridge. They want him to mess up. I didn't notice how tense I am until Bemele eases my grasp on his arm. 
Then suddenly the guy takes multiple long and fast strides toward, forward, throws a lantern and jumps backwards to regain, his lost, um, regain the lost distance. There's a sharp hiss and then a deep splash, and the voices of the Nixie grow quieter. Not silent, but quieter. A sigh escapes me, and the guide comes back to our group. We should keep going before it comes back. I glance at Bemele and realize he too is looking relieved at the guide before us. And then I see it. The first Prowler, it's still there. It's right there. Oh Jesus, that's some awesome artwork. Pull Bemele forward. I shift around to pulling Bemele behind me. The Prowler lunges after him, barely missing Bemele, by, uh, but, uh, but striking my lantern instead. The fire goes out, and the two of us are plunged into an unearthly darkness. Then there's a slick splash. I realize the Nyx has retreated to the water. Somehow Bemele and I are still standing. We're still here. Sorry. I am reading a horror story. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't, I can't respond. Something cold, wet, and slimy has grabbed my ankle. Kick it off! I kick my leg out as fast as I can, and the next cold slips. I, it can't pull with the momentum I've gained against it. Margaret rushes to my side, her lantern hanging out towards the Nyx. The light brushes its face. We see it for an instant, its eyes wide, and then it slides back into the smooth surface of the water. Oh, good lord. That was a trick, that was a trick thing. It could have killed me. Bemele grabs Margaret and I both, and helping us towards the center of the bridge, cussing under his breath. Yeah, but now the light's out. Now we only have two lanterns for four people. Are you actually all right? Aside from scaring the bejeebus out of me, I'm perfectly fine. Margaret, co uh, Margaret cocks her head down, examining my ankle, but there's nothing but a wet smudge around my trousers. I say that because I say that though I don't actually want to let go of Bemele. I need to in order to relate our lantern and provide us actual safety. But I feel such a strong desire not to be alone in the in this moment. Oh, we have matches, so we could relight the lantern. I shake my head roughly and let it go, and let go of him, relighting the lantern as fast as I am able. Thank you again. You saved my life. I won't let this happen again. Good. Yes. Yes. It would be good for all of us to pay more attention. Indeed. Margaret nods solemnly. My goodness. Suddenly, it seems like we're on the same side. We're all on the same side. It's only... It isn't only Bemele and I. She is with us uh, in more than simply presence. The guide's voice, as cold as that monster's grasps, ends my train of thought. We lost the lantern I threw. The Nyx grabbed it after the light went out. Of course. Margaret makes a noise. I glance over, wondering whether she's upset or but there's a small smile on her face instead. It's better than them taking anything else. True. That's a very optimistic way to look at it, and I agree. A nervous laugh bubbles up out of me and just as quickly stops. Bemily chuckles in response, and our collective tension eases up. The adrenaline draining from our bodies. I don't think the adrenaline would drain out of my body at all. We need to keep walking. The guide starts to go down with the bridge again, and we join him. I try to clamp down on the relief, the ease that wants to flood the my, flood my head. It's not over. No, it's not over. Good lord, it's not. <laughs> We're far from safety. The prowler is gone, but so is Bemele's lantern. Which is not a good thing. We still have my lantern. Oh, Kikia's lantern, but... Stay near me, Bemele. Since your lantern is lost. I... I appreciate it. It's no problem, buddy. I got your back. Margaret goes on ahead of us. Bemele stays by my side as I keep the end of the line. The breath of my of release for Margaret and Bemele is quickly swallowed by the somber atmosphere of Sinaloss as well, replaced by the gravity of the near-death experience. Never mind celebrating his survival. Something like that shouldn't have happened in the first place. The memory of the prowlers reaching out toward us appears each time I close my eyes. Yeah, well, you know what? That's gonna happen. You guys did make the stupid decision of trying to cross. It doesn't matter if someone say if people's safety is at hand. I mean, I understand that, like bravery, but there's no one to help you. Hell, there you can't help anyone if you're dead. Like, cause that's the goal. The reason why they're trying to cross over the lake is to get to the a settlement as fast as they can to help them. I think it's stupid. Honestly, I would have gone around. It would have taken an extra day, but I honestly think that would have been the smarter decision. I don't know. Don't look at me. I honestly... 
I honestly can say that the design for the monster is actually really, really cool. I do like it a lot. But, oh my god, they, like, made it look like a rake fused with, like, an SCP. It's so f***ed up, but I love it. The Prowlers are on Margaret's mind, too. Looking at her painted ex her pained expression, not her painted expression. I still can't read. It's as though the prowl the moment of relief never existed at all. I'm not sure. Not a clue. Me neither. Something's wrong with them, though. They live in water. Air shouldn't be good for the things, but they want to drown humans so much they're willing to drag themselves around on land. It's not right. Well, that's the, that's the thought process of monsters. They don't care. They just want to see people suffer. I mean, if you watched Attack on Titan, like, the Titans don't eat humans. They'll eat them and regurgitate them, but they won't eat them. Of course it isn't. They are monsters. They likely do not understand even the concept of right and wrong. Exactly. They just kind of care about bloodlust. I doubt it. Something comes uh, to her mind, causing Margaret to end her part of the conversation early. You. Since you two have to share a light, wouldn't it be safer to be in the middle? Uh, no, because then you would be on the end, and very likely, you'll die. Margaret stops and waits for Bemele and I to reach her position. That light will catch the edges of my light and the guides, and it won't be so dangerous if Bemele loses his position momentarily. Which... That's a very kind offer. Yes, but at the same time, you, you're you not a trained soldier. If those a Prowler attacks, if Kikia and me are in the back, if Kikia and Bemele are in the back, they can probably handle it. But you're not a trained warrior in any way, shape, or form, so you'd probably die. Bemele's surprise, uh, so Bemele's surprise is so apparent, I want to cover her, his face with my hands to stop him from insulting her. She merely smirks. I think Margaret may be surprised with herself, too. Bemele returns to his usual serity. to keeping watch for monsters and since there are two of us i can pay attention to the back while kika focuses ahead it's not my life though so i shouldn't be the one to decide what she should do with it yes margaret i honestly feel that you should stay in the middle to be safe margaret and bemily turn to look at me in unison seems it's like it's my decision neither of them are wrong as for me my goal is to protect everyone i can't very well do that with margaret following behind us but being stuck in the middle of the group could also be dangerous depending on what circumstances we come across. Getting pincered by the enemy would be an almost sure death no matter how experienced Bemele and, uh, and I are. I just don't know what to expect from this bridge, and that's what ma and that makes things so much more difficult. Oh gosh, uh... The current form format has worked so far. So you're staying behind? Yes, if honestly, and I, and I can say this honestly, if a situation like this were to occur, if I died, if I died, but it meant I could protect everyone else, I would totally do that. Like, it seemed like, yeah, I know, it was so noble, but it's like, I guess sometimes at the end of the day, if I died in doing something, that would make me happier than living knowing I could have saved someone else. I, I guess it would be kind of like survivor's guilt. I mean, I, that's not exactly noble. Indeed. Yes, I think we'll be good here. Indeed. But really, thank you. That was a very kind offer. Indeed. Well, all right. I like her glasses. Margaret respects our decision and trots ahead a bit to catch up with the guide. He has no, he wo, he who has paid no mind to the entire affair. So I don't want to sound like a child, but how much longer until we arrive at the halfway? <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> Margaret chuckles, reflecting the amusement. I don't want to vocalize. We still have some ways to go. Goody. Hmm. <laughs> I suppress my laughter yet again at his pounding response. The gloom we've been under dissipates slightly. Light flicker, like light flickering through the fog. The first trial tends to be the most difficult. I believe we will only react better from this point on. Fingers crossed. Yeah, optimism. We should all be more like Margaret, guys. Looking on the bright side. Then a gleam enters Bemele's eyes, and he grins. Yay, Kikia! Like a boss! 
He leans softly into my shoulder, trying to get me to what? Oh my god, guys. Emily shakes a fist at Margaret in mock anger, then shoots me an affectionate look. You should know. She and I are usually on equal footing. Hmm, <laughs> so he says. <laughs> the only reason you had footing at all is because she pulled you back. Oh, Emily laughs self -con uh, self consciously, scratching his head. That's very true. You can always count on keeping that. Aw. I keep my eyes steadily ahead, unsure how I should respond. I'm pleased. Almost grateful to hear what they think of me, but I don't know what I could say that wouldn't seem pathetic. Instead, I contribute the best way I can. I keep my focus on the path ahead of us. Without a response from me, the conversation quickly dies out. Still, it eases my heart to be in such friendly terms with my companions. Alright, I'm actually going to end the video here just because it's been going on for about eh, about 25 minutes, I think. Uh, God, guys, this game is so good. Like, honestly, between the art, the voice acting, the characters are really cool, the monsters are scary, I like it. Oh my goodness, the storytelling is really done, well done. GB Patch Games, again, freaking awesome game. I'm actually going to be playing this game all the way to completion. I don't think I'm going to go for the multiple endings, at least on the channel. I'll probably do multiple endings on my own time. Because I've been told there's multiple endings. So I'm just going to focus on playing the game all the way through once. Uh, I don't know how long this game is. But I don't really care because I really want to see what, how, the, uh, how the game ends. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you press down on that like button. Like there's no tomorrow. And hopefully guys, I'll get to see every single one of you in the next video. So make sure you take care and you stay frosty.